Jenny is the author of seven books, which her newest one is uh, Up Close and Personal, and uh, which she is shopping around for a publisher right now. Uh, she's also written some special ed books, and her first book, Deadly Choices, was an award-winning title. And she also has a book club, Zoom book club, that she will uh, mention later, which I've attended. And uh, she's also written a wonderful nonfiction book uh, about uh, one of her experiences with one of her students with autism. So I can highly recommend. And um, Jenny uh, moved here from Chicago five years ago with her husband. And I think that she has become one of the uh, big writers on the local writing scene. She gets out there in the community and she can uh, tell you also where you can purchase her books. And um, again, Jenny, I thank you and if, uh, we can get started. Great. Okay, wonderful. Well, welcome everybody. We're small group, but sure and sweet. And we're gonna have a wonderful workshop this morning. I hope that you're as excited as I am to be reaching out during COVID-19 to become stimulated to write and to read and to return to the library for a half hour at a time and to just improve and increase the vibrancy in our universe right now. We need that positivity and it's only through each of us that we can make that happen. So welcome today. I am normally a suspense writer. The book that Ron is talking about that I am shopping around up close and personal is a domestic suspense novel. And that one is a story about the estrangement that occurs between a mother and her two adult girls. It also talks about adoption and the resentment and discomfort that adopted children feel unless they fully understand from their adoptive parents and their birth parent too, why they were put up for adoption and how they can be successful in their lives. Today, we're gonna to be talking about COVID-19. If you are a person that's a writer, how have you found it difficult to work during these times? Well, you can always send me a chat on that by pushing the chat button at the bottom of your screen. But right now, I wanna share my own experiences. First of all, my husband has pre-existing conditions and he went into the hospital three times within the last three months. Thankfully, nothing to do with COVID-19. He had a kidney transplant 21 years ago yesterday and he had a lot of resultant problems with his body, his functioning. He's fine now. But the first thing that I noticed was that I could not visit him at the hospital. And I'm sure that many of you have had that situation if you have had someone who's been ill and had to go into the hospital, even if it had nothing to do with COVID-19. During that time when he was in the hospital for a week at a time, I did attempt to write two to three page articles that I would pitch to online magazines and newspapers who I thought would be interested in my insights during COVID-19. I'm going to read you now a three-page article that I did pitch. Let me ask you when I'm finished if you think that this one should have been published. I guess you can tell by my should have been that it was not. We'll let you be the judge of that. The article I wrote was called COVID-19 U-Turn. Prior to COVID-19, I strolled along my spiritual path, singing at Sabbath services, exploring interpretation of Bible verses, 
feeding the minds and stomachs of the homeless in my community in Greensboro. Confident that my unity with the creator was secure, I programmed my spiritual journey to autopilot and went on my way. Then coronavirus reared its invisible head, forcing our communities into lockdown. Suddenly, the three activities that define my spiritual journey shed their vibrant colors. Although I felt grateful for the opportunity to engage with others on a video audio platform, singing while muted and viewing Bible study participants solely from the waist up felt awkward. And folks my age were not being allowed anywhere near large groups of people, homeless or other. Realizing a COVID-19 U-turn was needed, I switched my spiritual gear to manual and parked my ego in the garage. At this point, I had nowhere to go, no one to see. My only decision at destination and determination was to go inside myself. My success was mediation with meditation was 60-40, mostly because my mind strained to break free from all external barriers. I had a gut feeling though that this time I would be more successful. As I worked on slowing my breathing and doing meditative body scans, I sensed some outer work was also required. I committed to standing still long enough to discover God's smallest miracles. I observed an ant drag a crumb of bread across my driveway. Glimpsed a beer-bellied bumblebee pollinate my garden. Witnessed a wren's jubilant warble as it balanced on the highest tree branch. Increased awareness of nature is not the only spiritual U-turn that I've attempted. Yesterday, I watched in awe as my chiropractor gently used two index fingers to adjust a seven-week-old baby. I noticed my next-door neighbor making masks to protect healthcare workers. I thanked the grocery clerk for putting her life on line by continuing to work, thereby providing us with food. Now when someone asks me how I am, I tell them and allow them to do the same. Patience really is a virtue. And now there is time for all of us to exercise it. I even look at hubby differently. No longer do I say, we've been married five zillion years. It is what it is. COVID-19 has made me realize how important this man is to me. Watching the COVID-19 death toll rise on the nightly news, I no longer allow arguments over ridiculous things to get me riled. Life really is too short. Being apart from my kids and grandbaby because of my husband's pre-existing medical condition forced me to learn how to communicate online. And all I can say is God bless Zoom and Skype, FaceTime and WebEx for enabling us to continue to communicate online via video with our loved ones. I can't even imagine how the 1918 plague must have affected people of that century without the comfort of technology. 
But my most important U-turn, that's how I treat my friends. Because pre-COVID-19, my tutoring and writing were all consuming. If a friend reached out to me during the week, I'd say, call you right back. My return call might not come for another six weeks. Over the years, my friends' phone calls have stopped coming. And I have been the only one reaching out to them. Now I realize the importance of maintaining a friendship via phone is no trivial matter. I recently spoke to a college friend as promised. I called her back immediately after consuming the Mother's Day lunch my kids had ordered me. You actually called me back, she said. Yeah, well, I've decided to become a more trustworthy friend, I told her. And I'll also be keeping in touch more often. My friend was delighted. The same thing goes for reaching out via phone and Zoom to family and friends that I haven't spoken to in years. Surprisingly, we get into conversations as easily as we did years ago. No longer am I embarrassed because I didn't bother to pick up the phone, worried about what they'll think of me. This time around, all of us, all over the world, are simultaneously experiencing this pandemic. Although only some of us have the luxury of being quarantined in a safe place with some money coming into the household as we work from home. I pray that each of us discovers our own personal U-turn, that we humbly reunite, re-employ, and re-acknowledge that each of us is part of the divine, for God created us all. The immigrant, the homeless, the busboy, the hotel maid, the teacher, the healthcare worker, the CEO, we all, we each are equal in God's eyes. Remember, we are our brother and sister's keeper. May you and your loved ones stay safe. So what is that article? Did you like it? Can I get some hand waves for applause? Okay, well, I will applaud. I'm really very surprised that no one published that because one reason is, and I feel like I'm not the only person like this, is that I really like to read about other people's opinions and experiences uh, in situations like this. And I just think the things that you mentioned in the article, you know, were very interesting and I, you know, I'm really surprised, very surprised that no one took you up on publishing that. Right. But the good thing was I was able to read it to you today and also read it at Toastmasters International. We have clubs all over the world. We have one here as well in Greensboro, more than one, many. At our Toastmasters clubs, we're able to write speeches, three to five minutes, five to seven minutes, 10 to 20 minutes, and speak those in our club. Now we're doing those online over Zoom, but we're not gonna let that communications ability die just because we cannot meet in person. And what's wonderful about Toastmasters and how it helped me over this last four months, and perhaps will even help you if you look to increase your public speaking ability is that it gave me the confidence and the opportunity to speak my thoughts and feelings about COVID-19 to a group of like-minded people that wanted to hear what were the best ways to deal with it. 
That being said, I'd like to give you an opportunity to share your experiences and how you dealt with COVID-19 and have been dealing with it for the last four or five months. I hope that each of you has a piece of paper <coughs> and a pencil or pen, or of course you can use your laptop. I'm going to show you one of several pictures. I'd like you to screenshot or just remember one of these pictures and relate it to what you've been going through during COVID-19. And perhaps it's been a learning experience. What was the finale for you? What was the aha moment that you received? Or perhaps you're just going through the moment and you're lamenting something that did happen and maybe thinking about how it can be more positive in the future. So grab your writing implement and your paper or laptop and we will begin. Again, you're going to choose one of the pictures I show you and you're going to relate that to the way you have experienced COVID-19 how you've dealt with it, how you still are dealing with it, and what your hopes are for the future. The first picture is an angel picture of Awaken. That perhaps might be something that you'd like to use in your writing. The second is an angel picture of self. Have you looked at yourself differently over the last several months and found that you're digging deep to find out who you really are. This next picture is invoke. Do you invoke the divine's blessings on what you've been experiencing during COVID-19? Happy birthday. Did you or a loved one have a birthday that you celebrated differently this year due to the pandemic? Butterflies. Are you taking time to spend more of your life in nature, noting the tiny changes, the tiny beings in our lives. Get well soon. Do you or someone you know have a relative or friend who's been hospitalized for COVID? My son, I believe in you. Do you have a son or daughter who is an adult and you're taking the time to really share with them how much you trust that they are staying safe and doing the right thing. Are you tending to your house more often? Your outside garden, watering, planting, watching your nature as it grows in your own backyard. Are you depressed, kind of sad about what's happening in our world today? Decisions that are making, both been made both politically and community-wide and within your own household. Do you miss going to restaurants and hotels and living it up? Do you have a trusted friend like I do? I have two little dogs. Dogs, they'll accept you no matter for who you, no matter what you are, who you are, good or bad, no questions asked. How has your dog or pet enabled you to get through COVID-19? And last but not least, I noticed that some people are still going to the beach. 
I have not had the guts to do that yet. Have you made the attempt to go back to the beach? Or do you just miss it? Okay, you've got five to 10 minutes to just write, write, write about one of those experiences. I'd like to share, and thank you for sharing everybody. I appreciated that. And Ronald, we didn't get to say, you know, going, digging deep down into yourself, that's the hardest um, scavenging event that one can do. And uh, I really respect that you were able to do that during this time, really. Thank you. Yeah. It wasn't easy, but thank you. Oh, no. I'm going to share with you just a funny um, thing that happened just a couple of days ago of how I've been dealing with uh, COVID-19 with my tutoring students. I tutor special ed. I used to be a special education uh, tutor. I was doing academic coaching over at Guilford College part-time for the special ed population, but, but that, of course, died five months ago, so... We're in a new beginning here. I have this uh, fourth grade little girl, and um, it's getting really hot outside. We're outside in the backyard. I'm working with her on her tutoring lesson, and I can tell she wants to come in. It's so hot outside, but I can't let her in inside because my husband has these pre-existing conditions, plus the fact we're both he and I are both over the age that, you know, you're supposed to be taking chances. We're not supposed to be taking chances. So I had this crazy idea. I'm going to fill two planters with water. She could stick her feet in one. I'll stick my feet in the other. And we'll carry on with the lesson. And do you know that's what we did and felt cool as a cucumber? Is that wow. So creativity is, in fact, the answer. That's what we're banking on these days. Instead of money, we're banking on creative ways to live and learn during this time. Thank you for sharing, everybody. I'd like to now talk to you uh, about the book choice that I'm doing for my Zoom book club and invite you to it. It's going to be on Sunday, August 16th at 12, uh, 2 p.m., from 2 o'clock to 3 p.m. Ronald was kind enough to visit our last session last month, and you enjoyed it, right, Ronald? Oh, I did. Well, I had a great time. Matter of fact, I just recently got the library copy of Fatal Reaction to uh, get prepared for the one in August. Okay, wonderful. If you'd be interested in attending my Zoom book club on Sunday, August 16th at 2 p.m., you can go ahead and email me at this email, spalonauthor at aol.com. Then you can ask Ronald if he can find any more copies of that book for you within the system. In conclusion, I would so like to thank Beth Sheffield for giving me the opportunity today to do this presentation for you, to share what COVID-19 has been like for my writing and to hope that you are all safe and sound. I'd also like to help, help thank Ronald for giving me this opportunity, walking through this Zoom account so that we can work together to make reading and writing a better experience right now in the times of COVID-19. Thank you. And thank you all for coming today. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jenny. I well, thoroughly you, enjoyed Jenny. it. And I, uh, Rachel, thank you for joining us. Yes. And just want to let everyone thank know. Thank you remind as everyone. well. Great. Thank you. That, uh, you can look, see other pro, uh, programming for this summer at uh, our website, www.greensboro-library.org. Uh, our calendar is on there, and you can see other events. Uh, all of our events, as I mentioned earlier, this summer are virtual. And uh, we've got more coming up in the fall, which we'll, we'll, be, we'll be saying later. And uh, again, I, I thank all of you all. 
and uh, Jenny, I will see you on August 16th.